Hi guys, hope you're all well. I've uh, been off for a few weeks off of YouTube. I've been working really hard and busy, 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 and well, that's my excuse anyway. But uh, I'm gonna do a couple of back-to-back -back videos to catch up um, with some of the incredible films that I've been watching this past few weeks or month, maybe even as long as that. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna talk about um, the films that I've seen and I wanna recommend to you. And um, yeah, so let's just get straight to it. Now, I think um, a lot of um, people would have already seen who watched this channel, so sorry a bit late to the party. I know there's probably a lot of Johnny Toe fans out there, but I, it's a new discovery for me. I did watch uh, Drug King uh, probably a year or so ago, ago and didn't really notice or look into who the director was. And I, but I remember thinking, this is, a, this is a great movie. I know it's remade as, as Believer, but... The original Drug King is directed by Johnny Toe. Uh, this film, um, quickly to review, is Throwdown. A really lovely release by Eureka with a gorgeous slipcover and um, lots of extras. Really beautiful, beautiful um, transfer. as a 4K restoration and it's just really crisp. I presume digitally shot, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's got like a, a really nice booklet in it and um, it's got some really lovely... Um, features. I mean, Eureka really are one of the best boutique video, uh, boutique Blu-ray labels out there. And uh, Spine Number 230 and Masters of Cinema series. Yeah, I mean, this is a real surprise for me. I, I was expecting a kind of a better than average crime thriller. Uh, what I got was, I would say, a near masterpiece. Um, very beautiful film. Lots and lots of um, gorgeous uh, neon um, nightscapes. Great characterization, fantastic, fantastic score. Um, the score is wonderful. Um, and just everything that you would want in a film. I say this time and time again, when you have watched these, uh, particularly East Asian directors, seem to have the knack of combining all the elements that every single filmmaker, uh, movie fan wants. And I never understand why more people don't get more into these films because you have... They always seem to encompass good story, great characters, beautiful cinematography, great soundtrack, and a real kind of um, sense of originality as well within that whole piece, which is really, really hard to to um, to, to get these days. And, and I just found that it's one of those films that's so many, so much going on. The stories are always a little bit hard to follow, which I find really interesting. And so it's great, and, you know, and that could be because of the, you know, the some is lost in, lost in culture. But, um, and some of the reasons for the, um, the character's actions are a little bit blurred and hazy to me. But of course, the idea of, of these films is that you, you buy these films, you watch them once, you almost skim watch it. If you know you're going to watch it again, and you, when you watch it again, you're going to get something new out of it, and you're going to read the booklet and find out more about the film, you look at the director's director of other work, and you're going to look at the extras and maybe enjoy the audio commentary. It's a whole treasure chest. And that's what I love so much about collecting physical copies. Um, because, you know, the problem we have, though, of course, is that you have so many of these films that we need to re-watch and look at the extras. There's never enough time. But I honestly... If you haven't seen this, then please, please, please check it out. Uh, I think it was brought to my attention originally by Hurston with Touch of Film, but I know lots of people um, love this film, um, and I can see why. So I continue my film odyssey and relationship with the South Korean director, Hong Sang-soo. I started off on the wrong foot. We had like a couple of dates where we, um, we didn't, get on very well with a couple of films that he made um then i moved on to a couple that i really did like quite a lot and now i think that it's now blossoming into full out and out love and respect for this director um with the film uh right now wrong then from 2015 and this guy's made a lot of films um i've learned now about his style of film where he basically <coughs> kind of makes the film up on the day of shooting which is incredible and you know, this is going to be the sort of director you you are either going to well, not love or hate, but it's not for everyone. I mean, it's a film basically walking, talking, drinking, eating, uh, Korean, South Korean middle class, and all their you know relationships and issues. Da, da, da. Um, 
But uh, and this is the bit where I'm like, how do you explain how a 55 year old guy from Essex can connect and can be emotionally involved and attached to this kind of film? I think part of it is because you're having a window into South Korean society or South Korean um, the way of life and the, the mundane things as the South, well, what South Koreans do from day to day. I do find that interesting because I have a real love for the country. So that that is one thing. The second thing is that the dialogue is super, super sharp and, and very beautiful, um, very clever. And also the third thing is that he uses very clever techniques. Um, I won't go into details. This is a film of two halves. Um, he's done it on a couple of films, I believe, where he just shakes up the, the um, shall we say, the order of things and shakes up the your kind of normal narrative of a movie um, and you know I think a part of this if I'm honest is you know when a lot of people you respect say to you this is a great director you know in your heart of hearts that you know you probably I was wrong and <clears throat> the other half of you thinks am I going to just conform to be one of the cool kids but Watching um, what are the three Sang Song Su films that I've seen now that I really, really like. Watching those films, happy to watch them again. Bought them to keep. Actually bought a book about the guy to study his films. I, I mean, I mean, I obviously do genuinely like like this director. And, and, and also, how many times has this happened to, to you guys? Probably a lot, where you, you watch a film or films by a director, you don't like them, you, you revisit them, and then you, you, you fall in love. Same with, that's why collecting is so cool. When you buy a film um, and you watch it and you don't like it, don't just automatically sell it, unless you have to financially. Just keep it, revisit it another time, because you never know. And that's happening to me quite a lot, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I mean... Right Now Wrong Then is apparently Hong Sang So's masterpiece. It's the, it's the go-to film if you want to have an introduction to him, I think. Um, so yeah, I would recommend it. Um, very charming and very, very um, hard to explain, but definitely give him a go if you haven't already. Okay, Netflix. Um, sometimes you go onto Netflix, see what's trending, see what's popular. Saw a film called Oxygen, or Oxygen, um, from uh, well, 2021 French film. Thought it sounded interesting. I mean, the, the the basic premise that got me hooked is that the whole of the film is set within a confined space, which is actually a cryogenic chamber. I'm giving too much away there, but that is what the you know. So it's kind of a film when I'm made in lockdown, I guess, or with that kind of feel to it. Um, it's one of those films that it just feels like a a really great f movie as you're watching it. Real solid, solid thriller, incredible acting um, by the, the lead actress. But what I loved about it is that what it turned into, um, I won't say too much, but it really blossoms into a really great movie. So you have to stick with it because, you know, yeah, most of the film, all of the film, most of the film, part of the film is set within a cryogenic chamber. And the whole idea is how did this woman get there how will she get out simple stuff but um, I mean the performance for Melanie Laurent was astonishing actually I just want to mention that astonishing performance um, not really um, familiar with her work but yeah she absolutely smashed it um, and also big standout for me was the um, the soundtrack and the Royal Sonics electronic soundtrack really fitted perfectly within the um, the, the narrative and the and the um the tone and feel of the, of the film and um of course <clears throat> directed by Alexandra Ajar who uh, proved his work worth for me with his excellent croc movie Crawl which was actually a um, father daughter relationship movie actually not a crocodile monster movie so yeah I'm gonna be I'm gonna check out his other films because um. I um, was really impressed with this film. And yeah, it's on Netflix. So, you know, it's French. Uh, you can watch it dubbed if you want, but I think it's obviously better to watch it with the um, subtitles so you get all the nuances of the performance by the actress. But yeah, great, great film, Oxygen. 
Okay, back to France now. Uh, Olivia Assayez. Uh, I watched a couple of his films actually recently. The first one of them is called Demon Lover from 2002. Um, that was streaming on, I think, the Arrow channel. And uh, yeah, it's a really difficult film to discuss because it's got a lot of layers to it. It's very un unsettling, it's very shocking. I actually felt quite anxious while I was watching the film. So that hats off to the director for managing to, um, you know, to kind of get that aesthetic into it. And I think the score contributes a lot to that. Um, and also I think that the, the acting is very understated, often kind of teasing at times. And it's a film that is hard to make sense of, but really, really engaging. You really want to continue to watch and understand what is going on. And obviously it does become more apparent as the film progresses. Um, it's a film that talks about the obvious dangers of the World Wide Web. And, um, but it's one of those films that I'm going to enjoy delving into a bit deeper, you know, checking out the extras on the, I mean, I, I, didn't bought the, I haven't bought the physical copy yet, but I will pick up the physical copy, the Arrow physical copy with a booklet and all the extras at some point, um, because I, this really surprised me. I didn't, I wasn't know what, I didn't know what I was going into, but, uh, yeah, I think, um, be warned, it is a, a, a very, very difficult film to watch. But as per usual, a lot of these films are, you know, they're, they're not doing it for titillation purposes. They're doing it because they're trying to teach you something. And also in the name of Art House, I suppose, as well. Because, um, you know, once again, this is, the film looks amazing. Amazing score. Um, so on and so forth. So, yeah, recommend it. Okay, so that's my... Uh, my part one and my part one i'll be back with part two in a in a couple of days just to uh continue my uh catching up videos of films that i've seen <laughs>